I always have uh, empty slides. <laughs> so, but it's not controversial to say that uh, reproducible analysis starts with software, right? I mean, we've heard a few nice talks now. The problem with software is that it's um, to deploy it is boring. Yeah, and developers honestly don't care how software is installed. Well, few do, but uh, I would say it's a small minority. So we're, we're dealing with the results. Um, but they are simply not interested. Also, users are not interested in, this, in installing software, right? And programmers prefer to look away, including uh, UN Birdie, apparently. So what about Docker? Um, and this is not a VI versus Emacs war. <laughs> But I have to say, in addition to the installation problems that you have with Docker and Singularity on HPC, um, Docker also is a binary blob. Yeah, and who here is happy to install a binary blob on their HPC? I don't think anyone. Because there could be anything in there. Also, creating the Docker images themselves, despite what people say, is not reproducible. Yeah, it depends on the moment in time that you install the Docker image, what will be inside. Debian, Conda, Brew, they all suffer from similar problems. And the truth is, you know, they're not fixating the dependencies. You know, you're not setting, you're not carving them in stone. And there's also a bootstrap issue. So the current state of the art is that we are building on shifting sand, even with Docker. Mm -hmm. There's a solution. It's called GNU Geeks, pronounced as Geeks. Um, and Geeks has versioning, and it gives real control over the full dependency graph. And so if you talk about versions, different versions of software that you need to control and the different versions of the dependencies, you can actually do that. You can fixate them. And GNU Geeks creates reproducible binaries, therefore, and will even con uh, create Docker containers and therefore singularity containers. So if you really insist on running Docker, you can still do it. I have a confession to make. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble with my wife. <laughs> I love new geeks. <laughs> I've been using it for four years now, and it, you know, we, we deploy very complex web servers, and I sleep at night very soundly. Also, I use it for development, and you can you know you can recreate environments. It's it's just incredible. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use new geeks and combine with the CWL and document the process and hope uh, we can move this, this thing a bit forward. Um, yeah, so when you talk about reproducible pipelines, you have to talk about, uh, you know, the, the software graph has to be reproducible, the data has to be content addressable. Um, we'll be dealing with metadata, you know, what are the descriptions of the software and these, these, these data sources and where they're coming from, tied in with Wikidata. Um, and then also we have a, a separate blockchain project where, where we are storing scientific credits. So if somebody runs a tool, somebody writes a tool, somebody writes documentation, you can all see that as, as output of science. And we can capture that. Yeah, so Michael is here. He had a talk. Um, the Galaxy projects, they are supporting CWL. Um, they are building in Conda support. Our studio support, Jupyter Lab support, I think is a very, very interesting environment now. I manage the network.org. Wikidata is, very, is an important player. And then with the blockchain and scientific credit with Alexander, who came up with the idea a year ago. Um, but he's not here, unfortunately, because of a back problem. So wouldn't it be amazing to have fully reproducible and shareable pipelines? You know, it's like a, it's like a dream. We're not there yet. I think we're getting away with murder, to be honest. It can be done. We have the technology. It's all there. Um, and personally, I found that software deployment is a little bit less boring than I thought myself. Um, so let's move forward. Thank you.